Hi, I'm a possum and I find garbage. I recently saw that movie 65, the one where Adam Driver gets chased by dinosaurs. I saw it at 2 p.m. on a Friday, and I was the only one in the theater. No one's talking about it, and no one saw it. As of the time of this review, it hasn't even made back its production budget. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spoil the whole thing since no one seems to care anyway. The movie starts with on-screen text explaining that long before humans were around, there were other civilizations all throughout the Milky Way. So maybe you saw the trailer and assumed this was a time travel movie, but actually, Adam Driver plays an alien who conveniently looks exactly like a human. They could have painted him blue or something, I don't know. Anyway, on Planet Samaris, which might be a reference to the Russian movie Solaris, Adam Driver's character Mel and his wife talk about how their daughter is dying of an unspecified movie disease. Mel has agreed to take a job piloting a spaceship full of cryogenically frozen people on a two-year mission in order to raise money for the unspecified medical procedure his daughter needs. Also, the planet Samaris apparently consists of nothing but this beach. While on their way to their unspecified destination, Mel is woken up by the spaceship's proximity alarm, and the spaceship has entered an uncharted asteroid belt and has taken damage. I would just like to point out that in, in the real-life asteroid belt, the individual asteroids are so far apart from each other that you would have to go out of your way to crash into one. Like, you could fly right through it and probably not even see one. If they were any closer, they would coalesce under gravity and form a planet. So, even though they managed to pass through the asteroid belt, which is beyond the orbit of Mars, and made it to Earth in a matter of minutes, which would indicate they were probably going a significant fraction of the speed of light, they crash land on Earth without immediately exploding into atoms. And it just so happens to be Earth as it was 65 million years ago. Mel wakes up in the middle of the night and realizes he's injured. This injury doesn't really have any significance to the plot. He looks around and realizes he's the only survivor, so he sends a message back home saying everyone's dead and there's no reason to send a rescue. He then grabs his space gun and prepares to shoot himself, but then he pusses out. Sometime later, the computer informs him that there's another cryopod that's still intact. I guess it just waited until now to tell him. Inside is a nine-year-old girl named Koa. While he carries her back to the ship, he sees a Tyrannosaurus footprint. So Mel brings Koa back to the ship and takes care of her while she pretends to be unconscious. And then he goes outside and looks around and finds a boiling geyser with a Tyrannosaurus skeleton. He walks around some more, and his sci-fi scanner thing tells him the other half of the spaceship is stuck on some mountain 12 kilometers away. Just then, he gets attacked by some kind of raptor. It's worth noting that, even though we now know that raptors had feathers, none of the dinosaurs in this movie have feathers. So Mel kills the raptor, and he sees Koa who, being a stupid kid, decides to run away from him for, for no reason whatsoever. So he has to chase her, because she's running away for absolutely no f reason at all. It's just... I don't know. He catches up to her and they find a dead dinosaur of some kind. And then they hear something big stomping around, so they go back to the ship. Now while trying to talk to Koa, Mel realizes she doesn't speak English. Or, or rather, uh, she doesn't speak the same language he does, because really, he wouldn't be speaking English either because he's like a weird alien. But whatever language he's speaking is represented to the audience as English. You know, kind of like in Star Wars. Anyway, the point is, he and Koa can't understand each other. So, Mel pours some kind of red powder on a table and draws a mountain and tries to tell Koa they need to get there to find the other half of the ship, which I guess can still take off into space somehow. But she doesn't understand, and draws stick figures to illustrate that she wants to know where her parents are. So Mel tells her that they're on the mountain, which is a lie. As they prepare to leave, Koa finds some recordings of uh, Mel's daughter, and we find out her condition got worse while he was gone. As they make their way to the mountains, some pterodons fly around to make goose sounds. It, really, they actually use the sound of, like, Canadian geese for the pterodons. And they don't seem to be at all concerned about these flying monsters, which they know nothing ad uh, they know nothing about them. And they're not worried about them swooping down and eating them. 
Uh, so at some point, Koa looks up and sees a big, ominous, glowing thing in the sky. While walking around, a giant bug lands on Mel's neck, and he smacks it with his hands. He tries to scrape the goo off on a tree stump, but it glues his hand to the bark, and while this is going on, the movie is playing comedy music. Like, it, it turns into this, like, plinky, pizzicato comedy score. It's just a, a weird shift in tone. Like, it goes from being this serious movie about a guy who keeps having flashbacks about his sick daughter being stuck. He's, been, he's stuck in this scary survival situation where they keep having to hide and keep quiet because there's giant predators all around. And then, it's, now they have, like, goofy... It's like a goofy comedy where a guy gets bug goo stuck to his hand and it's playing this mischievous comedy music. So, Koa sees a baby Tyrannosaurus stuck in quicksand and they rush to rescue it, and then it immediately gets eaten by these little raptor things. And at some point, Koa finds these berries which Mel scans with his sci-fi thing, and it turns out they're poisonous, so he tells her not to eat them. They stop by a river and fill up the world's smallest canteen, and then Mel climbs up a tree to use his scanner thing to see how much farther the ship is, but then a giant ant bites his hands and he falls and dislocates his shoulder. Just then, these big quadrupedal lizard things, which don't resemble any dinosaur I'm aware of, show up. And there's, there's like four or five dinosaur species in the whole movie, and I think most of them were made up. Mel manages to pop his shoulder back in just in time to pick up his space gun and shoot at the, the lizard things. And he tells Koa to run while the lizard things continue to attack him. And he continues to blow them up. Because apparently, dinosaurs weren't animals who killed or survived, but were in fact mindless monsters with no sense of self-preservation. And I understand they need Adam Driver to shoot at things because it's an action movie, but maybe they should have written it so he didn't have the space gun and just did something else, because it, it just turns into dumb schlock at this point. It made me feel like I was watching Raptor Island or something. Koa ends up on a beach with a bunch of pterodons which don't seem to notice her. And then the lizard things show up. And she climbs on a big log, and one of the lizard things climbs up after her. But then instead of immediately lunging at her like a hungry predator would, it, it does that movie monster thing which just kind of slowly moves toward her, drawing it out to build tension or something, and giving Mel time to rescue her. The movie actually does this several times, it drives me nuts. Like, uh, why, why would it do that? Like, why would uh, this animal do that? Is it trying to scare her? It, it's a hungry animal, why would it do that? I mean, other than to build artificial tension for the audience. So Mel shows up and shoots it, but then another one grabs her and drags her off. But then Mel scares, it, it scares the lizard things away by shooting his gun up into the air. So I guess seeing their friends get blown to pieces by the very same gun wasn't enough to scare them, but firing it, shooting it up into the air was enough to scare them away. That's what did it. So now Koa is too traumatized to keep walking, so they just hang out for a while, and then they find a cave to hide in. Mel sets up these glowing stick things, and then he checks his scanner thing, and it says it detects an anomaly in space, but it can't say what the anomaly is exactly, I guess because it doesn't know what a meteor is. Also, because the movie thinks we're stupid, it expects us to not realize that's the meteor that killed the dinosaurs, so it can do a dramatic reveal later. Yes, by some astronomical coincidence, Mel and Koa just happened to be on Earth mere days before the Chicxulub impactor. So, I guess the fact that the meteor is on its way is just there to add a sort of tick and clock element, because I guess being stranded on a dinosaur planet wasn't suspenseful enough, apparently. But Mel and Koa were already trying to escape the planet anyway, so adding this element to the story isn't really justified. It just kind of strains the credibility that they just happened to be on Earth at the absolute worst possible moment in the history of life on this planet by pure coincidence. The Cretaceous period lasted 79 million years, and this is the moment these aliens who just happened to look exactly like humans just happened to show up. Anyway, uh, Mel sets up this hologram projector thing which shows his daughter, and he finds out that she died while he was on his two-year mission. Then Mel notices Koa is sick or something, and opens her mouth and finds some kind of bug in it. 
He gets it out, and it turns out to be completely inconsequential. It's just a, a gross thing that was put in the movie for no reason. And that kind of describes a lot of this movie. It's just stuff happening. Like, episodes loosely tied together by a flimsy get from point A to point B plot. Like, wouldn't it be cool if there was, like, a spaceship that lands on Earth, but it was, like, dinosaur times, and they had to, like, run from the big lizard things, and someone got, like, a bug in their mouth? It's just nonsense, just stuff happening, with, with no, like, narrative through line. But then, the glowing stick things turn red, and it turns out there's a Tyrannosaurus right outside the cave, so they can't go out that way. So they go deeper into the cave and find another... To, to find another way out. And at some point, there's a cave-in and they get separated. So, Mel gets attacked by yet another raptor thing, while Koa makes her way outside and finds a big spike thing. And I, I don't know what it's supposed to be. Maybe it's from a Stegosaurus tail or something, but Stegosaurus lived during the Jurassic, and it would have already been extinct for 66 million years by this point. I mean, the movie's been playing fast and loose with dinosaur realism so far, but we never saw a live Stegosaurus at this point, so I don't know. Koa takes a leaf full of poison berries and wraps it around the spike. Now, Mel escapes from the cave and sees the meteor, and then rushes to find Koa, but falls into quicksand. Koa shows up just in time to save him, and then they make their way to the spaceship. So, by the time they've reached the spaceship, it's been three days. Now, maybe I misheard something, but I'm pretty sure it was stated that the spaceship was only 12 kilometers away, which is about seven and a half miles. It took them three days to complete a two-hour walk. Koa gets upset when she finds out her parents are dead, and they prepare to take off. But then a Tyrannosaurus shows up, but it's like a weird quadrupedal Tyrannosaurus. They fight it for a while, and then Mel leads it to another boiling geyser, but it's too smart to get sprayed by it. The movie does this that thing again where the monster just slowly approaches the hero, but then Koa shows up and stabs it in the eye with the spike thing. Now, you might be you might be thinking that the poison berries she wrapped around the spike would be what kills it, but no, it just stumbles into the geyser and gets scalded to death. So the whole poison berry thing was entirely pointless. It, it would have had the same effect if she just stabbed it with a knife or something. So Mel and Koa get into the spaceship and escape just seconds before the meteor crashes into the Earth. But then the movie just kind of ends without any sort of wrap-up or anything. Like, does Mel ever go back to his wife? Does he adopt Koa? Did the goblin turn on the stove? We don't know. They just fly away and the credits roll. So, that's 65. Uh, it's not the worst movie I've ever seen. It's, but it's kind of just like a lower budget version of After Earth. It's really not worth watching. I don't know, I guess wait until it appears on like Amazon Prime for free or something. So, I don't know, I guess that's all I have to say. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, support me on Patreon. Bye.